play is like our ability to be like water, like to be malleable, to flow into infinite possibility, like over and over. And it's like uh, so beautiful to see that you're going that deep. And I'm not surprised, but it's. <laughs> Intergalactic beings of multi-dimensional realities. Welcome to Channeling. Put you on, darling. Welcome to the stage. Welcome. Oh. <laughs> wow, it's so beautiful here. I love that. I'm going to do something very unique today, Leela. Oh my. Um, my guest is Leela Rose. Everybody, um, welcome to channeling. We're talking to Leela Rose, and I'm doing something novel today because I'm going to have her introduce herself, like. Her oh. fabulousness, like, you know, and she can do it and own it as first person, or she can do it as like, she is um, an announcer and she's just announcing her fabulousness to everyone so that everyone knows I want to be her friend. <laughs> oh, wow. good, good, good call, Gwen, like good medicine. We just, we just start playing. That's how it is. And I know you're up for it, Leela. <laughs> I'll go with the speaking in third person. Okay. Maybe, maybe do a little improv style. I never thought of that. So let's go with it. I like it. I like it. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to make you highlighted so everyone can see just you. Okay. Here she goes. Here's Lila Rose. Hey everybody. Lila Rose is over here and she's all about, you know, like making this evolutionary process a little more playful, just a little more playful, a little more smooth, a little less like, wah, and like really make dimensionality like a little more normal you know a little more normalized when we're like on these in these infinite timeline spaces graces we don't want to feel too crazy about it okay you don't want to go into the mental institution when you think you're just waking up so she's here to to, to, to support your soul in a little nest of a cocoon to embrace you with unconditioned love and telling you you're not insane you're not crazy nothing's wrong with you you're a shaman Kind of something like that. And so <laughs> she does this. In one going. <laughs> Boom. Switch her. There was Leela Rose. Oh my gosh. I have to say, tell everyone just kind of my first interactions with you. And, and I always really, um, I don't know, there's always these kismet kind of feelings to when I really connect with someone. And I, I somehow found you on, on Facebook and I was just like instant, like, I know what she's doing. She's about play. I know what she's doing. She's going deeper and deeper than anyone thinks. Even when she's playing, she can be crazy. It's awesome. She'll play these characters and I'll be scared of all the spiritual stuff because she's like showing all the shadows in it. And it's awesome. <laughs> And there have been moments where I'm like, okay, I really, I really, you know, in your play, sometimes you really do hit me. Like, I'm like, boom. All right. Okay. I got you, Leela. Um, that was awesome. And then there's other times where I feel like, like you just announced, like you're being invited into a cocoon of safety of play, you know, and saying, it's okay. Will they, you know, you're not crazy, but you are crazy because we can, we can be crazy together. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I'm sure crazy feel. <laughs> <laughs> so I think today might be a lot of play, a lot of play time. And um, you do like a lot of classes kind of walking people through opening in their creativity. Is that one of the main things that you're focused on right now or is it that theta healing that you've been bringing up a lot mm, yeah i well first of all thank you so much for reflecting that like my journey online is kind of like always a first awkward date because i'm like yeah. how are people perceive this and like sometimes i 
share something and it like you know so it just feels so amazing and such a gift to connect with you in real time to someone that's been receiving and seeing me it means a lot to me because it's quite a wild journey for me online to be continuously like I'm like who's out there who's <laughs> I know this is <laughs> what what version of me did you see <laughs> that brought you to me <laughs> um but right now so like I go through different waves that are kind of like different tentacles of the same purpose and they all connect mm -hmm. and all connecting in ways so um, my past few like groups and online journeys were about helping people get into their internal creativity and letting that echo out. And then I went really deep into people who were have journeyed with me already into theta trainings, which is really about reclaiming the power of our word and reconnecting with creator and helping them step into the healer in them, the wizard in them, and to a lot of very sensitive beings that think something's wrong with them. I find a lot of those beings come to work with me. Like, oh, I can't speak. You know, they think that something's wrong with them because of what society has projected on them and seen them as misfits. And I'm, I really love being there to help people see that they're actually very, very gifted and very yeah. psychic and very sent that their sensitivity is a superpower. So that was the wave of the theta, the theta healing trainings. And now I'm actually coming back to like the original spark that I had when I began facilitating, which is in sharing how to play together, like how to yeah. relate in playful ways beyond the mind, beyond words, and to embrace the state. I like calling it a child body where innocence just feels safe to like be labelless and in timelessness and in the unknown. And so there's this, um, there's this thing coming back online that I was doing for a few years that wants to birth through in a more ser like with a more serious note of like, hey guys, we actually need this for like mm -hmm. the next phase of our evolution. So I'm kind of like merging back with that after journeying and doing so many different things. Now it's coming back of like, I'm really being guided by the universe. Like this is important. Like this is needs mm -hmm shared with people and be relatable, how we can communicate and connect with anybody beyond words and beyond, like get really vulnerable. And cause if we don't feel safe to be vulnerable, then we don't feel safe. If we don't feel safe to be ourselves, then we're enslaved. If mm -hmm. we, if we don't, if we don't feel a support system in our body to like be in our true nature of our unique puzzle piece, then yeah. we're, the world is going to reflect that. And, so that's one thing. And then another thing is I'm, um, I'm in the process of completing a book, which is The Art of Imperfection. So it's all about detoxing from perfectionism. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about. So those are things. I'm also coming back to working with children again, which is really exciting. So it's really been like a dance of authenticity. Like I can't yeah. be like, this is what my life is about now. It's more of like, can I be sensitive enough to what's being called for me to pay attention to in the moment in a way that's honest and authentic without me putting my survival mode on of like, I'm going to complete this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to like yeah. that old energy of the way of living wants to like leech on to the divine purpose. Yeah. I mean, to like tame it like an, like a wild a wildling while staying committed to the journey. So I feel like that's something that is relatable probably yeah it is for me yeah. um you know this idea of everything having to be in a straight line cause and effect the idea it's really uh, you know when we when we in when we engage in this way we're really loosening the bands of that idea and we're we're it, it feels to me like we're we're acknowledging a field that's much greater than you know, like the singular line that we think we have to play out. And yeah. we're like, no, I'm, I am multidimensional. I am being called to, to play out certain things to uh, develop in certain ways. And, and there are cycles that I'll feel happening. There are ways that, you know, that I'll open this and then something else will be ready to bloom and then I'll step into that and, and explore. And then another thing will be ready to bloom. But all of these things tie back into the intelligence of our nature, like mm -hmm. to our themes that we're playing out to what we're here to explore. 
or yeah. create, you know? And so uh, me watching you has actually been uh, an acknowledgement of that. And me saying, wow, look at her standing so authentically, you know? And if one moment she's expressing in one way and another moment she's expressing in another, both of them are authentic. They're just different aspects that get to be seen get to be acknowledged, get to be integrated and developed. And so I, I'm really actually proud of you, <laughs> like, because you're, you're, you're helping me in that aspect, because oftentimes I, I, I want it to make, you know, I want it to look like A, B, C, D, you know, A is going to take you to B and, and it's all going to be tied in a cute little bow and it's going to make sense at the beginning. No, it doesn't make sense at the beginning. That's the adventure. Um, but but like there's this deep, deep faith of what the journey is. And I think the journey is just this deep unraveling and opening of our true natures and us honoring that. And so that's, I think, something for the longest time I felt. And I just want to honor you about that because I feel that in you. It's like this deep dedication to honoring that and and um, being willing to do whatever it takes. <laughs> To, to go to the next step. So that's something that I feel about you, Lita. Oh my God. Thank you so much for seeing that and acknowledging that. I I feel so, I honestly, that was a huge, huge okay. gift for, for me to receive. Wow. <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like, you know, we haven't really talked ever face to face before, but I feel like we have, you know, it's like, I feel like I've sent you all these messages, but like, they never were like in front of you. And I was never like, hi, Leila, do you know this? <laughs> Deja vu almost. Like yeah. it's, it feels very like, of course, now this is when we do this. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. I'm like, oh. and forgive me. I'm going to undo my hair. I'm like, I'm like, in my authenticity, I'm in my authenticity, everyone's going to be like watching me unbutton my thing. I'm like a camel. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm drinking. Um, I love that. I, I really I'm kind of now I'm opening and I'm like, what are we going to jump into now? What are we going to jump into now? <laughs> Is anything calling you, Leela? <laughs> well, I'm back on what you just said, because I feel like um, mm -hmm. I'd like to share my personal experience with that and yeah to highlight to people just a certain um behavior pattern that we have as humans that we learn to survive through becoming something very solid and like yes. me and i see me and that's my product and like even people just waking up and tuning into their offerings there's a lot of like mentorship of like you need to be clear with your branding and you need it and Every time, because I cared so much and I wanted to reach people and I started like that path of like solidifying where I felt like, oh yeah, that's the wave I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna do that thing. And then it felt like I was selling my soul, like on a very deep, deep level. And I was like, fuck, like I, I, I like that word. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I say you too. <laughs> um, but I had to like let it go and trust that it's like, I'm like, it, it, it's important for people to see that we're not one thing and that we're each a multi-faceted uh, being that can express itself in many ways. And so the vision, the symbol that really helps me is an octopus. Like when I thought, when I was initially waking up to infinite possibility, it was a nightmare. It's very scary for people to wake up to their infinite nature and to how free they are to play in a way there's a lot of shadow that needs to be looked at within our own being. And that's so intense and uncomfortable that people just prefer not be free. Yeah. And so a symbol that really helped me when I saw how limitlessness life is and time and space is, is a symbol of an octopus. It was like printed everywhere on the streets in San Diego. And the symbol is, is like, I, I was like, okay universe, why is this being sent to me? And it's because the octopus has eight tentacles and eight is kind of like infinity. So they're infinite expressions of ourselves and each one has its own kind of brain, its own dimension, but we're not one of those tentacles. We're not meant to just be one tentacle. We're like the center point that connects them all and we get to play with them and harmonize with them. So each mm -hmm. person, the more they see the different parts of themselves, and allow themselves to flow in and out of them naturally, 
I see more grounded interdimensional beings that are really playing with life, like people that have a product line and then they also have this thing and they also, and it all weaves together. So like, for me, it's comedy, deep rebirth, shamanic sessions, uh, um, mm. performance or like then play shop. So it's like all weaving together and I'm seeing that it actually works and that we each are meant to be these infinite portals that are rebirthing in multiple expressions that naturally harmonize, but we can't mm -hmm. identify with one. We have to like see that we're none of it in a way in order to be all of who we are. That's interesting. I love I love the symbol of the <clears throat> octopus and that feeling. And I as you were talking about that, I was I was trying to feel into the sensation of of, you know, I know that right here I I have work really hard to try and body to try and embody because I mean, even at the youngest age, I, I was having a tough time stay right here, you know, staying right here. But at the same time, there's a beautiful power in knowing that, you know, I'm here in my awareness doing my little thing, but also all of these others doing their thing. We're all actually one, mm, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're all actually like one. And the more I, the more I play, the more I feel that sensation over mm. and over and over again. And I'm like, oh my God, we're one. Oh my God, we're one. And like when I, when something clears through me, sometimes I'm like, oh, this actually is connected to that and this and whatever over here. It, it's not, um, or I feel like, oh my God, this is being felt by all of these other aspects. It's mm -hmm. actually this intelligence that I'm gaining or that I'm, I'm, it's like I'm offering it to them, right? It's like, here, here it is. And it's just getting to come through this expression, you know, it's getting to be realized in this expression, but it's being offered to all of it, if that makes any sense. And yeah. so that's kind of, it's kind of a fun idea. Um, people can take it to, in all different directions. There was one point where I was like, struggling with you know not having a, a partner and and I was like um you know maybe what I'm doing right now is just as an offering so that these other aspects of me can have a healthy relationship uh -huh. <laughs> you, know? you know and I'm like okay if that's what it is then that's what it will be uh, you know I will be an offering <laughs> but at the same time I would really like to have a beautiful relationship <laughs> You know, this is what I'm thinking in my brain. But there was this point of just totally acknowledging myself as an offering, you know, in love to all that I am. And I think that's a beautiful thing to be able to be aware of because it, I think it grounds us in such a deep dedication to ourselves, you know, beyond what we think we are. It grounds us into this deep dedication. At least that's what it was for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for sharing. I love that you're playing in that way because that's kind of how I like <laughs> playing too is like yeah, that interdimensional play and how that actually affects our whole life, our actual experience. And it's like a very internal, intimate process with the universe, you know, like yeah. when I hear play, they're like, oh, I don't have time to play or like I forgot how to play. And it's like, Play is like our ability to be like water, like to be malleable, to flow into infinite possibility, like over and over. And it's like uh, so beautiful to see that you're going that deep. And I'm not surprised, but it's <laughs> ah! <laughs> resonance to play at that level. And so I'd like to highlight also the fact that you you basically played with a question right like you're experiencing yeah. a partner and then you're like well you can i reflect about yes that? absolutely something that's also really alive for me now and i was just going to make a video on it today is the art of questions mm -hmm. into this so what you did basically is you tuned you you felt a lack or something and then you played with your perspective you you asked a question that made you feel like it, what did it make you feel when you asked that question? Like maybe I'm an offering of complete devotion of love. Like what, what feeling did you have in your body when you first asked that question? 
Well, I think the first question was more of a being me being with actually the feeling of the longing and the loss, the feeling of the emptiness, the feeling of the not wholeness, the, the, the struggle that I continue to, you know, the cycles that I continue to experience. And, and I think it, so it started from actually a, a space of really being with pain. Mm, yeah. And, and within that pain, me, me, walking through and saying, I, you know, I feel like I'm stretching here and I'm doing this and here and, and me asking. And the question was, you know, what am I willing to do in order to experience this divine love? What, what am I willing to do? Like, and, and there was this thought, there was this thought that, uh, I mean, me being present and acknowledging that there's, that I am more than this, me saying, even, is it possible that even if I, in this version of Gwen is suffering and feeling that emptiness and that loss, is there another version of me that could be feeling that wholeness, that could be feeling that beautiful connection and that beautiful sense of wholeness. And they're doing it because of what I'm doing now, right? And yeah. they're feeling that because of what I'm doing now, because I am willing to go through this pain, because I've been willing to walk through this and do whatever work is necessary. Mm. So that, that was kind of the feeling. Can you name that when you ask that, maybe they're experiencing that because I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. What is it like as like an energy or emotion in your sensation body? It felt like suddenly I had a home to stand it, on, to walk from. So it felt like belonging. Yes. It felt like safety. And mm -hmm. it felt like acceptance. Like that's three feelings that question brought to you. So I'm yes. I'm I'm getting like really kinked out about question asking. And yeah. so you basically asked a question that gave you the feelings that you needed to feel like you wanted to feel belonging safe supported connected yeah. and so imagination and your curiosity came up with this way of seeing yourself and your multi-dimensional nature that created and downloaded the actual feelings that you needed from inside yourself yes so i just i really really like couldn't let that just slip by <laughs> just I love that you I love that you really opened that up magnetized it yeah so like this is something that I've really been going deep into where you know question asking what ifs it's I've been doing it for like a few years and I'm um, thinking of different versions of me and downloading it and I almost felt like um overwhelmed with anchoring in these ways of seeing things and then letting it go and then asking other questions that would contrast it. So I've been exploring just journeying through only asking questions. So for example, yesterday I was like, what would it feel like to know exactly like what the steps are for my service in the world? Like, okay. And what, what, what do, what do I need to do in this moment in order to access that feeling now? Okay, and now what do I, so it's not about solidifying anything. It's almost about like not doing it all and just being open vessels to question asking. What question do I need to ask in order to feel in love with myself now? What question do I need mm -hmm. to ask to see that it's possible for me to meet someone I love today, like that I'd be deeply in love with? Mm -hmm. How would I look at myself in the mirror if I believed that I was, like if I if I was actually in a partnership today? So mm -hmm. like just at it playing with questions, like, Think of children when they first learn how to speak. They just ask questions. Yeah. Why? Why? How? Why is this like this? Like, it's just endless, endless question asking. And I realize that the answers that come are beyond the mind and they just download as feelings and sensations. And we have direct access to receiving what we need just through like having these curious questions as a prayer with source. Mm -hmm. Hey, like it just curiously playing without needing an answer. Does that make sense? Yeah. No question. That that's it's fun, and I'm glad you're you're opening this up to us because I think questions can be 
really super important. And what you brought up to me that really hit strong was that I was looking for this sense of what was I could what I was doing still be something that was connected and would help ground me and know that I was still connected even when I was feeling alone, even when I was going through the conflict. And I think I think one important thing, this is what's coming through. One important thing about questions is what are we trying to satiate, right? What are we trying to satiate when we're asking a question? Because sometimes our questions can be, they can be, I don't want to look at that. So let, let me look at something else, right? Yeah. I feel I like bringing that up because I've definitely, definitely done that also and right, like for sure. And I've mm -hmm. heard from the repercussions of just like being in the superficial level of the play. Mm -hmm. Notice that the more I played, like with possibility, the shadow automatically shows itself. Because yeah. what happens is when we play, like like play, we realize that we're free. When we realize we're free, we automatically take responsibility over everything. Like it's not that we need to. It's not that that's the ultimate truth. That it's all us. There's yeah. just a certain level of like, oh my god, like anything is possible whoa and then like the shadow comes up of like why do you see the government in the way that you do why do you give so much power? like well like all these questions of like why what it, like it's like <gasps> it's all me and then like it there's some a lot of like where we're bypassing where we're running it all naturally arises it's almost like a, a flower coming to its peak bloom and then it naturally begins to wither and mm -hmm. like go the earth so either way is great i for me like regarding pain i went head on like into the pain like that's where mm -hmm. my question asking began because i would go to healers or helpers and i'd be like whoa the world is like in a lot of darkness and they would just put me there would be like eventually they'd be like amazed by me and then they would be like just you need medication like you need and so i felt yeah. this that wow where do these people go that do feel this pain of the world and how weird everything feels and so I devoted my life to pain and being curious and asking questions about it so mm -hmm. I feel like for someone who may be watching this that doesn't really ask questions rather than like that you brought up a really important topic is to ask, actually ask questions about the pain one is resisting like what if this is yeah. good for you feel the sensation what, it, what would it be like to think of this as a medicine? What if I'm safe to feel these things and see these things? So it's really about letting all the gunk come up first yeah. and then playing with the possibilities because like a tree needs root for it to yeah. grow. Oh, I love this. What's what's coming to me right now is, you know, you, you talk about these questions. It, it's a path. It's a movement. And I think one thing also to recognize in these questions and, and going through this experience is that recognizing when we are starting to try and use the questions to grasp onto something and become solid again. And, and there's, I mean, there's points of beauty of that, of maybe being able to play in that idea and be able to express and move through it. But ultimately, you know, of course, being from a Buddhist background and and having this real solid education in, you know, what grasping is and dukkha and all these things that being very mindful that we have a tendency to ask questions a lot of times to become to feel more solid. And as we as we let go of that in find the juice in just being able to continue to walk and continuing to ask and continuing to move forward, then we're experiencing something completely different. We're, 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 we're at this point of stepping forward in every moment we can see the new us, the new multidimensional, the new possibilities. So are you comfortable in wanting to make things feel solid and that you know how everything is and all the time? or you know and, and that it makes sense and that it can't change or are you willing to see 
the amazing possibilities that are available at every moment. Mm. Right. Uh, oh. like, what, what are you willing to trade? You know, mm. right? love that so much as you're speaking, I, which is my favorite thing when reality becomes like a kaleidoscope, like, yeah. <laughs> when, when we start, I'm like, Oh yeah, no need for solid anymore. Oh, <laughs> Or the solid is just this little tiny point, yeah. you know, it's this little tiny point, my little, my big little toe or whatever. It's the little toe that's stepping on what I think is what I told myself was the next stepping stone. But in a second, it'll flip and it will be something different, you know, and then whatever, however we want to look at it. I think that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Oh, it's so yummy what you just shared. It just puts me in like this whole energy of inspiration of like, why? Okay, so the solidness, like why do we, because like I'll get into states where I'm like, oh my God, like I'm everything. I'm connected to everyone. And it, I don't need to, like, honestly, I don't need to do anything. Like it's all here. And I could just bask and soak in pure possibility, like a really healthy Epsom salt bath. Like, Mm -hmm. It's soaking and bathing and healing from like all the density and all the structure and all the like mechanical ways that of being, I feel like my body has been needing to like be still a lot and just bask in the possibility. And then there's this like, um, twitch almost like an automatic thing of the nervous system that I feel like I'm detoxing from gradually is like not feeding it is to okay now you need to get solid like now yeah. you need to be grounded now you need to okay go produce this is what you're born for now now go produce now now mm -hmm. go serve now go like share all that energy that you just filled up on and i i honestly feel that i'm detoxing from just giving all my life force away like that to an external um, this is actually something very deep I'm going through is noticing how I just, which is a gift and a curse in a way is like just helping somebody's dimension grow external, like going to their field of energy and being like, yes, to all that you're creating and like getting solid in their reality with them, which mm -hmm. is also a huge, huge shadow of mine that I've been needing to like tame like a beast of allowing myself to soak in the energy of my own essence of mm. of that it's okay to be free and then allowing life to move me like allowing life to move me naturally and i really felt this in costa rica when i lived alone for a few months in the jungle where i felt like i wasn't the one at all saying like oh i want to make myself a cup of tea my body was like dancing toward the tea and it was like ah oh, tea <laughs> Everything was very sloppy. And so I've been attempting to cultivate that even in this busy area that I'm mm. in. I am Costa Rica. Like it's inside. <laughs> I love that. I was about to say, you are Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just interesting that that pattern or addiction to be solid. Like what? I think that it's really deeply programmed and connected to love for us like that it gives us love if we're solid it gives us acknowledgement it gives us like a feeling of success or like we're valuable or that we have space maybe i don't know i'm just exploring yeah why we want to go so solid because we want to be yeah. seen validated but all those programs aren't who we are in our yeah natural. well I, I, that is a good question because i see i see some kind of like really inherent divinity in that in in that essence you know we're, we're all in everything at once we're we're the compulsion of expansion and we're the compulsion of actually coming back into oneness and i think that shows up in many different ways in how we act and how we are um you know and so acknowledging acknowledging the oneness i see in physical reality that some of us wanting to feel solid is actually is a part of that energy but it's because we're separated it it kind of can distort in some ways that we don't acknowledge and so for me being able to bypass this feeling of solid solidity 
actually transforming into this essence of coming back to our wholeness and coming back to our oneness, that if we're able to walk those, that fine line, that fine line and transcend kind of the little story of me, 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 and to, and, and expand it more into the larger me, 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 or I, 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 or <laughs> I am or whatever the seed, then I think that maybe it helps bridge that gap a little bit because there is inherently going to be that gap. There's going to be a little bit of a, you know, between us identifying in this realm and identifying as all that is, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd like to quote Matt Kahn on this, actually. He Matt said Kahn, it, right. that like the more dense, he didn't use these words, of course, but it, the way mm -hmm. I used it was that, um, we never change those denser versions. They never change. Like they never grow. They never like us thinking that we need to make that version of us become the bigger awareness mm -hmm. falsehood because there's an identification. It is what it is and it's meant to be what it is, how it is. And it's really a matter of us getting used to identifying. So like, this is my home. I like calling it home base. Like what is, your home base is your home base when you're stressed driving kids to school and like screaming at cars. Is that like how you perceive yourself as a home base being mm -hmm. or your home base? Not when you do that. And it's more about when you get home and you have your shower and you're in silence with yourself. Like what part of you are you identifying with? Yes. That's, me, that's stable. And so I've been in a process after I heard Matt Kahn say this of actually more and more identifying with the more vast no label self that is me and it's in a way it's very structured it's very solid our essence is like very yeah. unique it's like a puzzle piece and it's perfect like it's like you are exactly like designed perfectly for the collective body but mm -hmm. almost like we're a there's a subtle addiction to identifying with the smaller versions that we must make grow and we must yes. work on ourselves and we must heal. And like, it's just, it never ends like ever, yeah. ever, ever. And that, yeah, that's something that I've noticed will like it. Yeah. Those little versions of me haven't been switching and there is a gap, but the difference is, is that the bigger version is like holding my smaller versions. I'm not fighting my smaller versions. I'm not, He's saying like, hey, you better change your game. It's like, hey, honey, come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think I love what you said because it, it, with that perspective of, of, knowledge, of acknowledging, you know, I'm the thing that holds me as well as this little, this uh, little identity, you know, and both of those identities can be experienced at the same time. Ah. And both of them, and, and this is a part of our multidimensional aspects of ourselves. But as we do that, I think that allows more play to occur. You know, it's like, it's like, it's, it gives this little me, to, as well as the big me, more permission to play. Yeah. You know, more permission to say, well, what if, you know, like, what if this idea of what I thought I had to be actually is much more malleable than I ever thought it was and that I can find ways. And, 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 and this is exciting for me to find new ways of exploration. This is exciting for me to play an identity. This is exciting for me to, to feel a little bit more free and, and feel the movement or whatever. And then maybe I become really solid in something that I want to experience really deeply, you know, and then, and then that can loosen up because it's, it's just being experienced for the, for, for my whole self, you know? So I, I love, I love how you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you're bringing in both things because right now I'm getting very solid with certain things. I'm like, focus, I'm, I'm writing this book. I'm, I'm like putting up those flyers to mm -hmm. do pop-ups with kids. I'm like, this is me now. And, and like, and it, it almost feels like, um, fun to like enjoy solidity and form in a way. And while not losing the bigger, just like you're saying, like, I love that you put that in words of like, we're both and we get to play more. Yeah. Um, we allow ourselves to be both. And also it almost feels like building the vision that just came through is like building steps on a trail. So mm -hmm. I like put a solid padding and now let me like step forward and like, and then it's like, 
like walking the visual that's coming through is like infinite space and then like yeah. creating each step to have an adventure through infinite possibility and timeline i feel also called to just say that like it was really hard for me when i was asking a lot of questions which i mentioned before and mm -hmm. if i watches this like that's where like oh my god am i psycho like am i schizophrenic am i bipolar like the questions like manifest pretty quickly, like especially if we're checking the edges of it. So what's really helped me with navigating questions is um, what like, what are the three core feelings I wanna feel, which is like peace yeah. new, and calm, like mm -hmm. basically, that's mm -hmm. what my biggest self is feeling because it knows itself, because it knows its love. So really not like in order to not go into that shadow of like oh my god i can be anything experience and like it can feel almost overwhelming like oh my god i'm a creator being and i'm horrible at this like <laughs> or, or or then you feel like you need medication you know it's the yeah. what really is focus on three feelings that feel really 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 good to your body yeah and ask what questions can i ask to access these feelings so it won't turn into like, um, I want to run away from reality with yes. ways of seeing things. I'm not trying to like dissociate from my body. I'm actually feeding my body with mm -hmm. what it, which is calm and peace, a sense of stability. Like that's what I was noticing that the questions need to consistently fuel. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. And I, I have a... I have a kind of a practice that kind of ties in with that. It's called in my world. And I mean, it really begins with really being aware of specific qualities. It could be one, two, three, whatever qualities that you really feel uh, inherently you desire to experience your world as, you know, the, and, and inevitably those qualities are you in a way? I mean, they're they're not a foreign object. Even if you're feeling upset, or even if you're whatever, these qualities are innate to the field of what you are, and you claiming those qualities and you asking them to um, illuminate your world, or for you to walk forward in um, revelation with them because they'll reveal things to you. If you claim them, you say, in my world, you know, uh, compassion reigns, you know, and uh, and all are cared for, you know, like if, as you say something like that, and then you, then you enter in in curiosity with that, then yeah. what it's doing is it's being guided and le leading you in this expansion of yourself with that quality as support. Yes, I yes. love I literally just wrote about this exact thing like mm -hmm. yesterday. Literally just this. I love that there's in my reality right now, I'm blessed to be with you to have this level of resonance. I'm just so I just want to take a moment to be like <laughs> I love it. Uh, this conversation has been a long time coming. <laughs> I want to ride piggyback ride on yes and that. Yes. Energy and um it, yeah, it's like almost like uh, when anything is possible, it's like creating. So what came through to me when I after I saw the octopus was like commandments. Like, well, if you can create, create your own commandments, like create your own rules of your game. And with well, the vision that came through is like pillars, having these pillars. And the more we feed our attention to it or share it in words with others, the more value they get, the more real they get. So like, mm -hmm. uh, for example, an anchor pillar for me was everything is a gift everything mm -hmm. is a gift. Mm -hmm. everything unfolds as a gift for me everything and it would be i would be in these realities where everything was just endless like hell and i would just walk through the forest and just be like everything is a gift everything is a gift everything is a and i just started repeating it to people you know like everything's a gift that must be a gift and recently yeah. week i had to return to create more value in that pillar of like mm -hmm. in my world, everything is a gift. Yeah. And I know that when I really was like, this is my truth and I'm going to anchor it in for all beings, no matter yeah. what my mind is telling me, no matter what my mind is saying, you're spiritually bypassing your blah, 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 blah. No, this is a medicine that I'm anchoring in 
as mm -hmm. evidence of my own being that this is true and this is going to serve as a medicine to the people yeah and what really values a truth that we're anchoring in as like a, a pillar and when i did it my whole reality was like beginning to glimmer and i'm like oh whoa, like all these regrets that I'm having now are actually all perfectly orchestrated gifts by the universe. And if I just knew that everything's a gift all the time, I'd be so much more relaxed. <laughs> I would be like regretting myself. Like, wow, this is a great pillar to invest in. Right? Yeah. yeah. And like, oh my God, this is so painful, but I know it's an, this is an amazing gift. And suddenly it starts opening as a gift and you're like, oh God, it really is a gift. Yes. You know, and, and it's your conviction in, uh, in honoring that it's a gift. It's not, it's not an excuse. It's not anything like that. It's you literally, you literally honor it as a gift and you're making it a gift. You're in your creativeness and it is becoming a gift because you say so. It is your simple choice to honor it as such. Um, I love that. I love that. There was something else I was going to say that was tied to it, but it left me. So it's not important at the moment. Well, what you <laughs> heard in your words that you said that you did it. Yeah. It's not running away from what is, it's being an active creator and investor yes. for the ball. Like that's what's key for me is like opening the heart to service also like, oh, I'm not only doing this for me, I'm doing this for the whole body. Like how would people feel if this were true? If people yeah. knew that everything is always a gift, what would that, what would that feel like for people if I was living evidence that everything's a gift and yeah. I had stories to prove how everything's a gift? Yeah. Well, that would be a yummy, loving feeling for people. And so I'm going to devote. I love that you amplified how it's like, a, I don't remember the words you used, but I love them. That energy of like, <clears throat> like, it's yes. creatorship. It's like, yeah. isn't your investment is a good word and uh, in, investment, uh, what you invest in, what you're you're direct, you know, you're offering a direction. You're informing the world. I call it informing the world. You are oh. informing the world of what it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, awesome. I get to inform the world. And so I think it's really yummy. And I love how you said, you talked about you're offering it to the world because the way I see it is when we claim something for ourselves, we're, it's not an exclusion of anything else. It's also claimed for the world because we are all one. And if we think that only we claim something for ourselves and everyone else can go to heck, <laughs> you know, or whatever, then we're, we're actually, what we're actually invested in is that separation. Mm. and it just creates more of that polarity more of that dynamic in our lives and we're like why why the why the bleep you know is is this happening the way it is you know so i feel like it's so important for people to realize that for me when i grew up there was this thought of if i claim it that means i'm ta taking it away from someone else mm -mm. Yeah. when i claim it and when i'm investing and when i'm informing then what I'm doing is I'm offering it to everything and everyone. Yeah. I'm offering that door for yeah. them as well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. I love the word informing. It's like you're putting into form. A yeah. Game. And I feel like just by shifting that, even now I'm like, <clears throat> I've been like, you know, I've been struggling with something on a deeper level that I thought, you know, it, you're like, oh, I'm completely liberated from this thing that I yeah. with, like comes back and it lasts for like two years. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and so just what you said now, because it's kind of like a something that I need to like, actually, like, this is for me energy. Mm -hmm. But like what you just shared is like I'm doing that this is for me mm -hmm. for all the beings that for all of us like yeah. this doorway that I'm discovering of this is for me is a very awkward doorway because the way I survived child was always like oh my family oh the people I'm a living prayer like I'm in service like that energy and yeah. for me, balance has really been about Okay, me, I don't need to focus on all. I could focus on me, and that's naturally part of all. Yeah. 
But I love that word that you just shared, that gift, that code of informing and creating a doorway. And I'm naturally with all, but that that subtle thought that, oh, if I'm doing it for me, then I'm being separate. Like there's almost like a whole system of programming around how us taking care, like being our natural selves is like selfish or irresponsible. Yeah. Like I just feel like working a lot with people also like getting rid of those programs because those yeah. programs actually manifest into reality and people are like, well, the world doesn't support me being me and all these people hate me now. But those are like beliefs that are looping about what comes along with you being you. Oh, you have yeah. to be, you have to like um, not have friends. Oh, people don't love you when you stand up for yourself. Like these are all like word algorithms yeah. and just, you experience it in your world, it doesn't mean it's real. Like, it's like. Yeah, it, it, it's the magic of word. It's a, the magic of the word and it coming into reality. It's the magic of our training and our language and 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 our reality being entrained into the language uh, too. It's it's amazing what can happen when we, when we shift to how the words we say and how we say it. There was something that I wanted to bring into that that I thought was so interesting. I wanted to st be with the thought of selfishness for mm -hmm. people because this has been an interesting one for me. And you know, one of, you talk about questions, and one of the amazing questions that we can ask is, "Well, what does it mean if I am selfish?" Oh, what, what does it mean? And so, as we look at that question, then we might come and say, "Well, it means that a." Uh, that I am taking away from others, B, that I don't love others, C, that blah, 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 that I will be alone, that blah, blah, you know, all these things. And we can kind of unravel and open and wrap them up and then say, and then one of the great questions can be is, what is this? What is the gift of selfishness? Mm, yeah. Like, what is the gift of selfishness and how can it transmute in a way that actually acknowledges oneness? Right. Mm. Like how can the idea of selfishness transmute our idea of selfishness transmute to acknowledge oneness? <gasps> oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> We're having fun playing with questions today. <laughs> My partner talking about the selfish selfish gene key and gene keys. Uh-huh. And it's connected. Oh. Self, the gift of selfness. So, so Gene Keys, mm -hmm. our genetic structure has different codes yeah. for collective. So he actually has the gene of selfishness. And so just witnessing that, how it's direct access to selflessness. Like, I want to hear the question you asked again. Well, let's see if I can remember it. It just flows through. <laughs> so... <laughs> all my wires moving. yeah so and this is something that i do it's a kind of a mapping or unwinding that that my guides helped me open to but anyways it's you know we're sitting with this idea of being selfish and we can ask ourselves if if i'm selfish what does that mean and then yeah. we start unraveling we start unraveling what that means what we've what the definition we've attached to it and then we come to the spot of how can i what is the what is the simple, sh what is the gift of selfishness first? Mm -hmm. What is the gift, what gift does it offer? And then uh, usually as we're in that gift, there's a transmutation that occurs, but we can then say, how can my definition of this be transmuted to acknowledge oneness? Oh, that's good. Yeah. I there's beyond words by you asking those questions. That's cool. I love that. Not immediate. This is the power of our synergy, Leela Rose. <laughs> <laughs> the medicine trickle in. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good medicine. It's amazing because I, my imagination hasn't come up with those questions and receiving that gift of the question. Like, my brain was like, oh, should. I give a word answer. Should I like come up? And then it's like, no, just receive the gift of her question. And the way you sequence the words in the question was a very potent medicine for me. 
Yeah. Built. I feel I feel it's a beautiful way of unwinding, you know? It's like if you're with something, there's a there's a process. And if we believe and if we acknowledge in the beginning of oneness, see, because I'm very much like this is so core to me. I'm like oneness is like I am oneness. And so so whenever I come down to feeling a quality that we interpret, that's the key question for me is what you know, what um how can I offer this definition to acknowledge oneness? So it's mm -hmm. always going to, then it always brings in that connection, but that's so cool. Cause this is in a way it's new medicine for me. I didn't realize that's what I do. <laughs> oh, amazing. So I just came up with something really cool. Listening to you, that you have mm -hmm. a base question that it's like, it's like, um, you have keyword of like, how does this acknowledge oneness? Or like, yeah. that does it for you. It like gets your chi going. Yeah. It's now that actually I have a key base question too that just always works for me and unlocks mm -hmm. for me. Like, how could this serve as a medicine story? So like, I see everything as like play a, a theater. Like every, everybody's playing out characters. Like it's all divine play. It's all like, yeah. and so it's all storytelling. And, you know, like the way we evolve or share information is actually through storytelling. It's through yeah. sharing stories and it's not through necessarily, it's like we get to co-create stories. And so medicine story, like the feeling of a medicine story, like when somebody shares a medicine story with me, it just feels like the sweet nectar of like, oh, anything, yeah. oh, I'm safe. And so I when I ask that question of like, wait, how can this situation, how can this relationship how can this circumstance, how can this desire, how can this anything, how can this, how can this pain serve as a medicine story? It yeah. really like downloads. So those are like, that's like a key question. There's a key question. Yeah. Magic too, like with everything of like the, the keyword medicine. And I feel like for you, it's like acknowledging oneness. Is that it? Yeah. Well, and I love what you said because you're talking about story. And for me also, it, it, it it connects to that thought too. Like for me, when I think of story and I think of play, the same thing happens is underneath it. It's like, how can, how can I play in story and it acknowledge oneness? Like how can my story acknowledge oneness? Right. Uh -huh. How, how can this play in all of its, variety and all of its all of its extreme i'm playing with the extreme and all of the se separate you know identity and all these little particular little things how can it also be acknowledging oneness <gasps> at the same time a baby with both the questions <laughs> yes because that's the width of it like then this is the field we're playing in yeah. right yeah. this is the field okay oh. Okay, so I have a question. Yeah. When I hear a word a lot, I notice sometimes like like uh there's certain words that people start saying over and over and then it loses what it means to me. Yes. I hear oneness. Mm -hmm. I know what that is. I know what it feels like, but my brain it's like curious to hear three words that describe the experience of oneness you for me yeah this is good because everyone everyone goes i think through phases of understanding oneness mm -hmm. um for me uh ooh, there are no words <laughs> but let me see if, if i can come up with um um I think it'd be more like statements, like, um, I am never lost. Mm. Oh, I'm never lost. Um, or, or no one is ever lost. None mm. are lost. None are ever lost. And, um, let's see. Mm, expression and 
gosh, I think that's all I can come up with words wise right now, because I mean, there's so many different words surrounding it. Like part of me might want to say illumination because that's a combination of, of the kinetic structure, but also in order to have that, there has to be a space. So yeah, like for me, I think that's interesting that that's the first thing that I can say that's so makes sense to me. Oh, I like as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, oh, like that's almost like the I feel like the shadow of oneness is the lostness. I've noticed mm -hmm. also in session when somebody's right about to merge into connecting with source and all that is, it's like, yeah. oh no lost forever like that's one of the biggest human wounds of being lost forever in mm -hmm. and separate and so yeah. you just worded those words of no one's ever lost it felt like the sweetest nectar to my heart and it was like yeah. oh yeah oneness like I was able to actually experience it beyond my mind and yeah. then it's kind of cool it's like a rule to oneness like no one's ever lost like <laughs> yeah. It is. Like, no one's ever lost. If you access the game of oneness, no one's ever lost. Like that's yeah. one. I, I think that's true. And I'm I'm glad you appreciate that because I'm I'm feeling more into it. And it really is this is something really deep in my heart, you know, and I and I think one of the reasons why I'm so willing to go into the shadow so greatly, because it's almost like it's a commitment. It's a commitment of oneness. It's a commitment of me saying nothing is ever lost. No one is ever lost nothing is ever lost. Right. And it's like, so that to me is a part of the, the dedication of my soul. Mm. So, so it, it's so beautiful because it, it, it shows up in all different kinds of ways, but also within that is acknowledging that when we feel we're lost or feel separated, or we feel like we've been rejected or abandoned, it's actually just, we're actually just in the field and we're not our identity and what we're identified as is simply feeling that separateness is feeling that aloneness is feeling all of that and that we all at the same time feeling that aloneness we all we all are held and we're always held there's nothing there's no way that we can escape that we can think we have we can think we've been abandoned but there's no way that we can yeah Oh, that's so beautiful. I feel like you just fueled uh, one of the core human wounds of like coming into this dimension as um, different beings. And yeah, at the in Hebrew, you actually call it simtsum. So it's like when you come from the wholeness and it shrinks into one perspective, it's like to shrink. In a way, it's like a shrinking experience, being a, agreeing to come into the human experience, and I feel like it's like a almost like a wound that we did to ourselves. Yes. Like, yes. This experience, and then this is just such a beautiful sequence of words that, um, yeah, it's like a rule of the game. And to me, it's like nope, like you can play. You know, it just feels like um, easy access understanding to feeling both, like feeling the oneness and feeling the depths of lostness. And it just, to me, it, it, it's like, you have to be, do you have to be willing, like in your, one of your, it's like a devotion for you to like live mm -hmm. that embodiment. Mm -hmm. How lost were you willing to get in order to access that? Like, <laughs> Well, I felt a lot of it, you know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how to compare it, you know, my devotion is my devotion, and it will show up how far I, you know, how far that gets to go until I'm saying, I'm done with that play, <laughs> you know, and, and now I can confirm it. And now I've claimed that mm -hmm. for myself and everyone, but I don't know, you know, I mean, there, I, I've gone through some pretty deep, hard things you know and I'm, I'm sure everyone has in their own way but um yeah i, I mean it, in a way it, it's it going acknowledging terror that terror and being able to be with it yet at the same time opening up and rec recognizing the the 
all that I'm still here, I'm still held, is like, it's an amazing, beautiful thing. If we're willing to acknowledge that, then we offer ourselves that medicine. Yeah. Because when you said those words, I felt yeah. the energy and the knowingness in it. It wasn't like yeah. you were like, oh, no one's ever lost. No one's ever no. lost. No, no, yeah. Oh, he knows. <laughs> this is, this is the <laughs> truth. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. that. That's so beautiful because it, um, I always see like the, uh, I always like seeing it as an adventure, as like the cave of wonders, like what cave of wonders is the soul willing to explore and then cultivate that pillar of light. And mm -hmm. so, so it's funny because sometimes like when encouraging beings to play, it's like, it goes dark. It's like, what? Like, and it's like, it's, you know, like in a way in order to be these playful beings, we got to go into the cave of wonders. Like you got to go into the depths of the ocean in order to really play and not play at like a superficial level as a quick fix to say you're yeah. like not when I say play, I do not mean that. And I, 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 I'm very passionate about bringing in a new definition to the word play for people when they see it. Cause play to me is like yoga. It's like, Oh, yoga, like yoga practice or whatever one like play is like almost like a, I feel like, in my human experience, it's a word that hasn't really um, been valued enough. As yeah. you, and like people have all these associations with play. Oh, like, oh, my children play. I try to play with them sometimes. It's like play is just the gateway into so much like yeah. in our psyche. And so it's interesting because for me, like my deepest hell, can I share like what my- Yes, please do. <laughs> this is so fun. We share our deepest hell here. Welcome to channeling. <laughs> For me, it was like being stuck in confusion and chaos forever. Like, and, and the more I, I, like, that's where the strongest medicine came through for me and now I like what how you worded it like okay I'm done with that game yeah. I feel I don't need to visit that anymore because I know now like I know that how to the gift of like so in the gene keys like the gift of imagination so the chaos mm -hmm. in the chaos there's the ability to I don't know how to word the gift actually but it's almost like a piece a deep 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 piece no matter what confusion is arising or mental like I, I be in peace with that and I know that peace and is an easily accessible thing from the inside yeah more, more and now I'm like okay done with that done with that game or like you know yeah. like um and now it's it's kind of a lot more easeful like when the chaos or it's like oh yes this is this is the cave of wonders like welcome <laughs> Well, I, I love I love that metaphor, the cave of wonders. I think that's so amazing because really stepping into play, part of you is being asked to step into awe. It's being asked to let go and to open into the awe of all that is and uh, the awe to all that is. And when we do that, we can we explore in so many ways. And I love you talking about like that confusion and all that stuff. And what I see in it is like, you know, you get wrapped up in this this thing that you call play and then you discover the deep you discover what's holding it and suddenly this doesn't seem this doesn't have control of you in the same way you suddenly are able to say oh you, you know I, 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 this is this is what the pattern is of confusion right and uh, you know i i now am capable enough in the depth of this to be able to spot those those little um those questions or those patterns that lead me to just express confusion all the time or lead lead that to you know having being you know what i'm wrapped up in what my energy is being um offered to you know 
And so we we start to be able to do it in that way. And it's just, it becomes very powerful. We start to understand how powerful we are. Even if it's one little small thing that we are able to see and shift, just even slight and say, oh, oh, you know what? That was fun to explore, but I'm just going to do. And now it's just redirected just slightly. And wow, my life is going to, it's going to feel so much better now. Thank yeah. you. I like that you also highlighted the slight because, you know, um, there's a reactivity that can come up when we face each of us, our greatest cave of wonders. Like people face that one thing that they do not want to feel like my whole first part of my life. I'm like, I'm never going to be confused. Never going to like, um, at all. Like I know exactly who I know exactly what I'm doing. And then like my cave of wonders started opening. I'm like, uh, uh oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not going to be visiting you. <laughs> like there's a lot of uh, reactivity that can come in because it's in a way the most uncomfortable part of us to visit. Yeah. And so it's important to be very subtle. Like everything I did to polarize being away from it, like I was facing infinite possibility, chaos, confusion, stuck in it forever because I saw the vast possibility of the infinite universe and was feeling it and living it in my body. And so I was reactively creating um, stability with my imagination. Like I was like reacting to it. Yes. Oh, I, I was gifted with an angel in my life that I met after a few years of just compulsively creating and compulsively imagining realities into existence <laughs> mm -hmm. that, um, met me and sat with me in my hell in my cave of wonders and he was like i could be here forever and we just sat and somatically felt how true it is that i'm gonna be stuck in confusion and hell forever like forever and wow. god that this angel came into my life because i don't think i could do it alone and i feel like we each have those angels and helpers when we're about to face opening that cave. Yeah. And now I get to, like you said, like subtly like, okay, now I'm not acting to it. Now I'm not running from it yeah. of the truth. I know to be true about my hell. That is more real than any reality will ever be. Like I know I return to it after <laughs> any clarity comes, it's gonna collapse into, you know, so. <laughs> But it's important to like do it subtly and gradually to like begin dancing with it and relating to it in a new way so the gift can come through. Like when you say you're never, no one's ever lost, I can feel yeah. how you know how to like gradually move in and out from the lostness and yeah. the oneness because you're okay with moving within that bandwidth of your soul. And I kind of like creating like a. I love that. that things for people like it it excites me so i love I that because when you when you shared that feeling comfortable moving within that bandwidth i think that's to me that shows this sh subtle shift of when you're 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 pushing the polarities uh, you know when you push the polarities it becomes can become very dramatic but as you but as the, they they aren't polarities of right and wrong of resistance and i don't want to feel this then we can dance in the field in, 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 you know, between those two things and know that there's, there's a sense of stability. There's a sense of it's okay. Right. And then we, I think then we, then we start being able to actually redirect our synergy and, and our energy and our truth into being strong. Uh, to, to me, that's alchemy, you know, to me, that's alchemy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Oh, I love that. I feel like we just had a baby reality. <laughs> we did. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, I just love that. Like the the we had a baby. <laughs> the reality. <laughs> Don't be free, my child. <laughs> it was a long labor, but you know, I, I know how to get that thing out. <laughs> Oh my God. Isn't that amazing? The word curiosity, how yeah. like through interacting with your consciousness, I always thought of that, but now I feel like it's like a whole next level with the 
movement and the dancing in back and forth and out of like that feeling like like that wholeness of our being it's just oh it's so exciting and yummy yeah that is so good i love it i loved doing this with you lila rose we're we're gonna we're getting to close this lovely thing i've been feeling like opportunities to close but it's like we just keep on going and having fun but i would love to have you as a guest again and just work together and play and yeah. and just feel into how people can really step into play because that's a deep deep thing in my heart is and I call what I do soul play um, because it, it's, you know, it helps people con to connect and say, oh, there's a deep essence that's involved in this. There's something really beautiful and deep, even if we're looking silly and, uh, you know, doing our makeup to look like kitties, you know, everything we, we can acknowledge the depths of what we are in everything that we do. And um I, I'm just so grateful. Is there any last words that you want to share before we take off? And, and I'll make sure to provide links for everyone to get a hold of you and what you do and your theta healing and everything else. Um, so any, any last words that you want to share? Um, yeah, I, I'd be, I'd love to invite in the gateway to what would it be like to get really comfortable with uncomfortable moments? Mm. Like, and how can we feel comfortable within the uncomfortable moment? Yeah, that's a good one. That question. And I, this was so fun. I'm so grateful to you. I'm so grateful that this is the first time that we're connecting. And it's that it's just visual and beautiful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. My inner child just wants to wiggle its butt. I know. And I, you know, and I want to just keep on going and going. And, and I have a feeling that we'll just have more explorations and we'll have fun. And maybe you'll show up on my Discord. Who knows? Everyone, I'm on Discord and I'll make sure to have my links and a free connection to a lovely meditation. So just make sure to click the links and connect with both Leela Rose and me, Gwen Juvenile. And we'll see you next time on Welcome to Channeling. Mwah! Mwah! Click the link below to receive your very own free soul play meditation, reboot, or soul song. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Welcome to Channeling. Till the next episode, own your stage and play on. Hot Muffin Media.